Hello there, Van Again Addicts. It's Ken Wilford here at Van Again. And I know that I told you guys that I was going to, I had one broken off stud uh, in my engine here. I was going to take it to a machine shop to get them to deal with it. Here is the broken stud right here. Uh, and like I said, it was over torqued by a previous employee of mine. So I was going to take it to the machine shop. I took all the other bolts, uh, the, all the other studs out. And I was like, you know what? Let me take a look at this thing. So I took a look at it. And there, the way this thing was broken, there was actually a, a raised piece that was sticking up out of the case. And I thought, you know what? So it wasn't broken flush. Okay, it was broken with a raised piece sticking out of the case. And I'm like, you know what, I might be able to get that to turn. You know, a lot of these other studs, when I went to go take them out, they were almost finger tight, they were almost hand tight. And so I said, you know what, let me just try it. And lo and behold, I got it out by myself. So I'm going to kind of show you some of my methods that I used to get this thing out. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see it on the video. I put the broken stud back in the hole right here just to... You know, I don't want to put it somewhere where you can't see it. I want to put it someplace where you can actually see it and kind of see what methods I'm using to get it out. So number one, of course, put WD-40 on it. Number two, heat it up with the torch. As we've been showing you guys, go around in circular motions, heating up with the torch. Then once I did those two things, I actually got out this punch and you can see that we actually ground the end of the punch to make it sharp, okay? Uh, and when you do that, you can go in here, you can, where the raised portion is, right, you want to put that up against the punch, punch up against that with a sharp point, and then you want to start tapping it in like a counterclockwise direction, okay? And so as you're tapping it, you're looking at it, is it turning? And when you see it, you know, oh, it's starting to turn a little bit, then you can take another bite on a different, slightly different angle. It's hard to see on the video. But you can take another bite, it's like slightly lower here, and tap that and kind of tap it around. So you want to try to keep tapping it around, okay, tapping it around to loosen it. Um, and it's a slow process. It took me 45 minutes to take this thing out. Uh, you know, you get it a couple turns out. You really, what I was trying to do is just get it out far enough so that I could get these grips here and just get the very edge of it grabbed with the grips. And then once you do that, right, you can just take it out. Okay. So, you know, that was the method I used on this one because, like I said, it. And then once you get to a certain point, you can just take it out with your hand. Um, because it wasn't broken off flush. Okay, you can see in this, hopefully you can see this, um, it has a, a high spot on it where it snapped. And that was sticking out enough so I could push against it, right, with the uh, chisel, with the punch to get it to turn. I got it to turn a couple times and then I could get my grips on it and get it to turn even more and then I get to the point where I can just take it out. Okay. So, you know, this is my tips. This is one of my tips for doing this. Now, if it had broken off completely flush, then you have to drill, drill it. Then you have to try to use the easy outs. Okay. Uh, you really don't have any hope of doing it this way. But if you have one that's you know, has a high spot on it, and you can try to do it this other way. You know, it's a way to do it yourself, okay? Now, one of the things you have to be careful about, though, too, when you're using chisels and things in this area, you don't want to scar up, you know, where your cylinder is going to sit. It has to be nice and smooth. So you have to be careful. I mean, you don't want to get too aggressive because you could make indentations around this area where the cylinder is going to sit, where that O-ring is going to sit. 
and it's not going to seal properly. So, you know, be careful, um, but it is doable. So I got, I got that done yesterday, and I'm ready to put my new studs back in. I've decided to not um, put anything on them. I think I'm just going to put them back in as they were. I've got this set of studs from Van again, from your friends and mine. The best Volkswagen parts store has ever existed in the history of the universe. Okay, great. I'm glad you guys think that. I appreciate it so much. So, got my new set of studs right here, and I am going to just install them, you know, without any kind of stuff on them whatsoever. Like I said, you wind up with, uh, I think, three different lengths, and it's uh, 16 studs all together, so you want to kind of set these out here somewhere with your sort the lengths out so you make sure you got all your correct lengths okay sort them out make sure you got eight of the longest ones and then I think it's four and four of the other two lengths pretty positive I've sold these a million times to people uh, you know it's going to be more of a common issue I mean, back in the olden days, you never had to do this. Nowadays, I think it's becoming more and more common. And a lot of the rebuilder guys are just doing it right off the bat because they don't want to have to deal with, you know, takes these backsies. I understand all that. Yep, so we've got eight of the longest and then four and four of the other two lengths. Here's the three different lengths that you have. If you can see that, okay, maybe. They're, you know, different enough so you can tell the difference, okay? Uh, three different lengths. So, that's my next thing is to install, you know, all of these. Uh, you know, they came out pretty easily. So I'm assuming they're gonna go back not too bad. Eh, this one's being a little bit of a pain. I've never haven't messed with these yet. So maybe what I'll do before I probably put these in is run a tap in there. And you want to use a bottoming tap. You don't want to just use a regular tap. Let me go grab my taps real quick and see if I have this right correct size here. Alright, so it looks like I have a correct size on these. It appears to be correct to me. You've got how I usually always tell to is you can put the two threads together from your your tap and your stud. And if they mesh together good, that means it's the right thread pitch. And then you just gotta go with the length. I have these uh, tools that allows you to put your tap onto a socket very easily. That's what I like to use for that. And then I'm always going to put some oil on it also to make sure that it's you know clean and that it's got the ability to you know not not bind up. You know when you put taps in something it needs to be smooth and tap in and out real easily. So you want some kind of light oil. I got some oil over here I can use. You can buy like cutting oil basically for it or you could use like really lightweight oil, gear engine oil. Just something that lubricates the tap while you're using it so that it's not binding up. 
All right, let's see what happens when I go in here. All right, this one is not the correct one. It's a little bit too small, okay? But anyway, that's the, that's kind of like the way to do it. And you go in, right? Just try to go in slowly. If you feel resistance, stop, take it back out, see what's going on. Does it have a bunch of stuff on the threads? You know, again, you want to be nice to it. You don't want to strip out all your threads when you're doing your, your tapping. You're trying to chase the threads and clean them out, but you're not trying to, you know, destroy everything because it's going to make more work for yourself. So that's my tips here on removing a broken off stud by, by yourself and also, you know, threading in new stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and tap these all out chase it uh, and then put in the new studs and then I'll probably bring you guys back because the next thing I'm going to be doing on this particular motor is going to be reaming out the cylinders the I have the original pistons and cylinders that are in good condition reaming them out checking the rings which all should be in spec because it's only got 75,000 miles on it and start to put this particular motor back together Look, my goal on this was just to do a top end rebuild um, I still have the other one that's got I cleaned off, power washed off. That one is going to be a full rebuild. So we will get back on that as soon as this one's done. I'll probably, you know, put the camera on and do another uh, speedy uppy video after I get the cylinders and pistons back on. But I'll show you some of that stuff and you can come along with that. So please like, share, subscribe. Make sure you click the notification bell. You get notifications every time we do a new video. And if you want to see something specific, let me know. I'll try to do it in a future video. Thank you guys for coming along, and we'll see you guys in the next video.